Hi everybody, Jennifer here. Welcome to my Stick and Bricks home kitchen. I'm getting ready to go winter camping, so I'm going to make as much food as possible to take with us so that we don't have to go out and buy our food. I've got three different recipes I'm gonna make. I've got a soup recipe, a Tuscan chicken recipe, and meatball sauce recipe that we are gonna take with us so that life will be much easier when we're on the road and we don't have to scurry around trying to find food. Because sometimes you go to places where restaurants are few and far between, especially with COVID out there. The first recipe is going to be broccoli cheddar soup. What can be better in the winter time than fresh, nice, warm soup? And I'm gonna put Mike to work grating the cheese. Two tablespoons of butter go into the two cups of water and the two cups of chicken broth. Five cups of broccoli sitting here. We've got our cream cheese, half and half, cheddar. There's the cream cheese. I'm adding the cream. Now I used fresh broccoli and you have to chop it small so that it'll cook thoroughly and be nice and tender. You don't want hard broccoli in there. So, chop it up good, five cups. Okay. Two and a half cups of cheese. That's all my hard work there, and I get the privilege of putting it in. This is right at the end of the soup. It smells pretty good already. I'm gonna pour that in. And this is gonna thicken it up a little bit, I think. Not much, man, it's just instant melts. Wow, where'd that cheese go? And of course, when you make soup like this, you gotta test it before you put it away. It's really good. You know, whoever grated the cheese for this really did a good job. It's very good soup. Can't wait to go camping. Keep me warm. The second recipe we're gonna take up with us is crock pot Tuscan garlic chicken with spinach and sun-dried tomatoes. Getting the garlic ready to saute. Going to add it to the crock pot along with the chicken and a bunch of other ingredients. Got six garlic buds that I'm going to saute in the butter. I get to saute the garlic. Boy, you really smell it. So, it smells good. Yeah, it smells very good. Now what do we do? I'm going to add some cream. Heavy cream, right? Yeah, I ought to do that. Put that in there. And then some chicken broth. A third of a cup of this. and we'll let it simmer for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we better start chopping up the sun-dried tomatoes and two cups of spinach. I'll get the tomatoes. Sounds like a good plan. How you doing with that chopping? Yeah, I'll stick to the knife. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it keeps you busy, but it's gonna be so good when it's done. Why are they sticking to the knife like that? Because they're good. moist. Yeah. <laughs> Sun ripened tomato. Want me to do it for a little bit? Yeah. All right, I will. Two are better than one, right? Two are better than one. We gotta get this going. Now I know why on all these cooking shows they have everything chopped up and in little containers and they just pour them in. The recipe calls for six to eight chicken thighs, but I'm not gonna use chicken thighs. I'm gonna use white meat, so I'm pretending that they're chicken thighs. Let's cut them up, and I put them in the bottom of the crock pot. So I am pretending those are chicken thighs. But they're white, white meat, it's white chicken meat. breast. Chicken breast. 
As for spices, the first one is a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. So we'll put the Italian seasoning in and then a teaspoon of crushed red peppers. We'll add that. Looking good. I'm supposed to add a little bit of black pepper. So I'll put some pepper in. I love freshly ground pepper. And then some sea salt. Put that in. Good. Remember those sun-dried tomatoes? Well, now it's their turn to go into the crock pot. We're gonna put those in there on top of the chicken and the spices. Spread those around. Okay, it says when the cream sauce is ready, and I think it's ready, lower the heat and whisk in the Parmesan cheese. What the heck does that mean? What, what's a whisk? This is a whisk. And let me show you how you do this. We're gonna add in the Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna whisk it in. And then we're gonna pour it on top of the chicken. Let's bring this out a little bit. And let's put this on. Okay, we gotta kind of try to get it on top instead of just at the bottom. I'm gonna cover all, everything. Okay, if we cook it on high, it's gonna take three to four hours. And if we put it on low, it'll take six to eight hours. So, you know, you could do something like this if you had all the ingredients in your RV oh, while yeah. you're driving, right? Oh, perfect. That, boy, what a great idea. So you could just let it run while you're driving. You'd have to, you know, be a kind of a hassle to cut everything up, but... My only complaint with Crock-Pot cooking is the cords, for safety reasons, they don't make them as long as they used to be. And if you can get the cord, get the pot in your sink, someplace where it's anchored, and the cord can reach an electric outlet. That's the only hitch. I don't know if I'd like an extension cord. Yep, and your inverter would work while you're driving. And yeah. You could smell that as you're uh, driving. Perfect idea. Perfect idea. But we're not doing that. We're making it in advance, and we'll have it ready, and it'll be even easier. And we're making it in advance because we don't have running water in our rig because it's winter. Because we're winter camping. Because we're trying to prepare everything so that I don't have to do dishes. How long is this going to take? Well, four to six hours. Three to four if I'm high. Six to eight if I'm low. I think it's going to be really good when it's done. Our daughter-in-law gave us this recipe. said it was excellent. We have one more secret ingredient to add. That fresh spinach, chopped up, two cups worth at the end, but it's all cooked, almost set to go. Put two cups of spinach in there, the last couple of seconds, and just long enough for it to wilt, and then you're ready to eat. All right, it's done. And the uh, recipe calls for you to take out the chicken and then add two cups of spinach. But my daughter-in-law, who gave me this recipe, said that she just shreds the chicken, like I'm doing right now, break it up in the crock pot. I'm going to put the uh, spinach in. Let it be in there with the chicken for a couple of minutes until it starts to wilt a little bit, and then we are good to serve it. And it's going to be done. The spinach is uh, wilted just right. It's cooked perfect. So, Mike, it's time for you to try your Tuscan chicken. Okay, now, uh, we've never made this recipe before, so we have no idea. It smells good. This is really good. <laughs> I mean, really good. We serve it over. Oh, it's got a little kick to it, too. <laughs> Must be the pepper. Yes. So we um, serve this over rice mm -hmm. or cauliflower rice if we want to make it keto. This is really good. I mean, it really is good. Well, Tell you the it. truth, we weren't sure how it was going to taste. <laughs> it tastes really good. Well, I can't dip that in though. No, you can't dip it in now. But uh, this recipe was given it to us by our daughter-in-law, Lori, and our son, Scott, loves it. We're going to get several meals out of this. And uh, I'll put it in smaller containers for the RV a little bit later. But for right now, I want to wash my crock pot. Oh, this looks uh, 
Mike, I'm so happy you like it. It looks good. It's going to be great on top of your cauliflower rice. Man, this is good. We'll put that recipe in the um, blog post that accompanies this video, but um, this is good. We're going to eat good on this camping trip. Mm -hmm. And we got one more recipe to make, and that is uh, another one of our favorites for camping, meatballs. So here it is. It's all set to go, and we have several meals of this. Tuscan chicken. All right, now it's time for the third recipe that I'm gonna make up to take with us camping. And I got my Michigan apron on. We're going over on the Lake Michigan side to camp in Ludington State Park. I'm going to make meatballs. This recipe, one pound of hamburger, it makes uh, 16 meatballs. We like to take meatballs because you can make a, a sandwich. I love a meatball sandwich. And also, if you want to make spaghetti, you can throw it in with uh, to make spaghetti if you need spaghetti. Or if you just want a little meat with a salad, got a meatball, meatballs ready, get them out and uh, serve them. So this is an easy recipe. I've made this once before, but uh, here's my pound of hamburger and I am ready to start. First step, I've got a butt of garlic that I'm gonna chop and put in the meatball mixture. Break up the meat a little bit. Once I break this up and get the uh, garlic mixed in there, I've got a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese and half a cup of mozzarella cheese that I'm going to mix in there, as well as one large egg. You have to beat the egg before you put it in. I'm going to add one egg that's beaten. I'll put that the egg in there to mix it in. I've got half a cup of mozzarella. Get in there, mozzarella. Put that in there. And I've got a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese to put in there. I didn't buy fresh parsley. I'm going to convert the fresh to the dry parsley. So instead of two tablespoons of fresh parsley, I'm going to put in two teaspoons of dry parsley. And some pepper. And I'm going to skip the salt. And I'm going to mix this up. We're not big fans of salt. No, I try to avoid salt wherever I can. Mix this all up. And then I'm going to make it into 16 meatballs. It, uh, the recipe calls for two tablespoons of olive oil, but I'm gonna start out with just one tablespoon. If I wanna add more, I can. I'll put this in the pan and I'm gonna turn the pan on to start warming up while I work on these meatballs, getting them ready to go. I'm going to form 16 meatballs. I'm going to brown them down and then once they're cooked through, I'm gonna put them on a paper towel on a dish to get some of the excess oil off them. Oops, <laughs> I guess I made them a little bit too small. It's supposed to be 16, but we've got 17 because I don't want to add that one extra one on to a couple of other ones. So 17 it will be. We're going to brown these down. It takes about 10 minutes. Cook them through. While the uh, meatballs are browning down, I put Mike to work chopping up the onions, even though he's probably going to cry about it. <laughs> onions. The onions are for the sauce that we'll be making once the meatballs are done. Everybody cries when you. When if you've got a onions. fresh onion, you, it forms some tears in your eyes. I have browned them down, simmered them for ten minutes, and now I'm ready to take them out. And I did add that second tablespoon of olive oil. I thought one wasn't quite enough, but boy, I've got a lot of grease in there right now. So I've got to let these drain, and then I'm going to use the same pan to make the sauce. There it That's is. That's what How you they did. Do. You did a great job. <laughs> so we're going to put the onion in there and brown it down. And if I think I need more of that grease, I'll add it. And I remember from 
Uh, one of our other recipes you had me do that... Uh, I'll let you stir it up. That we want them translucent in color. Translucent we want. Five minutes you get to do that until they're translucent. A lot of tears were shed over these onions, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But I'm okay now. You're okay now? I'm yeah, glad I'm you're okay now. Now, we were chopping up garlic earlier to put in the meatballs. Now we've added this garlic for the sauce. Those, by the way, are translucent onions. They look a little brown because there was brown because of the grilling the meat. Okay, the garlic, you put it in and you leave it stirred around for one minute until it's fragrant. Smell that garlic? Mm -hmm. Good. Ooh. That means you don't have COVID. And there's no vampires around. <laughs> so we've got the garlic in there. Now we add tomatoes. Now I look long and hard to find tomatoes that usually have to get them made in another country that don't have salt and very, very little sugar. And this is what I found. No salt in here. In our American diet, too much sugar, salt, and fat. Unless you're on keto. <laughs> and I need a teaspoon of oregano, dried oregano. Sprinkle that in there. And some salt and some pepper. And we're gonna let this simmer. My little salt. Just a shake. It's a, there, enough. Good enough. All right. Let this warm through and let it cook. I'm going to mix all of this together. And as soon as I feel that it's uh, mixed well, I'm going to add the meatballs, let it simmer for 15 minutes, and then it's done. Time to put the meatballs back in. I hope they don't stick to the paper towels. Then I'm going to put all the meatballs in here, and then I will put the cover on and let them simmer for 15 minutes, and then this will be done. And I will put it in small dishes, the size that I think we need for different meals. Cover up these meatballs with a sauce. All set to go. Put the lid on, let it simmer for 15 minutes. Set the timer, and then it's going to be done. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. Time's up. Ah, this looks good. They're done. Yep, they look good. I'm going to put them in this bowl mm. until I figure out how I'm going to divide it up. I'll just let them be in here. This is nice and thick. Last time I made these, they weren't so thick, but this is a fine sauce. So there is nothing better than a meatball sandwich hot when you're winter camping. With some Parmesan or uh, just put some cheese on top of it. Great. Mozzarella so, cheese. So, Jen, mm -hmm. I notice you're a detail person, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm going to help you out a little bit here. Yes. How many meatballs was that recipe supposed to make? It was supposed to make 16. We made 17. Well, let me help you with that little extra detail. Okay. That means give me the 17th one. All right. We can, we can arrange that. Oh, you worked so hard chopping onions. Now, this is going to have to cool off. Okay. I did. I shed all those tears over those onions. And yes, you did. So, get a little plate. We'll put it on it. We'll let it cool off, and it's yours. Number 17. We have completed our three meals that we're planning on taking with us when we do our winter camping. I have some soup in containers that I've frozen it's ready to go. I have picked up these inexpensive, handy, different size little containers that you can pick up at any supermarket or you can pick it up on Amazon. And it's just an easy way to stack up and save your food, fits nicely into your small refrigerator space, and uh, we are going to be ready to hit the road. Thank you. 
let's start off filling the freezer. All right, uh, broccoli soup. All right. Tuscan chicken. Sounds good. Uh, a whole bunch of broccoli soup. <laughs> and Can't have too much some more soup. Tuscan chicken. All right. Sounds good. The food is all packed and we are ready to take off on our great adventure on Lake Michigan. Yep, we're heading up in the snow. It's going to be fun. Uh, you know, everybody's going to want those recipes. Well, we'll make sure that we post them so that everybody has access to them. In fact, we'll do a, an accompanying blog post at rvlifestyle.com and we'll list all those uh, ingredients and the descriptions. And uh, I can tell you this much, uh, we're going to eat well on this uh, winter camp out. So we I can't wait. I hope so. <laughs> all right. And uh, we'll show you the winter camp out in maybe the next video that follows this here on the RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a thumbs up. And when you do that, don't forget to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel. Uh, if you click the bell icon, you'll get notified when we have new videos online. So, we're going camping, and we're going to eat well. Happy trails! <laughs>